two-way contingency table is widely used in statistics. So what is two-way contingency table? So two-way contingency table, we have two variables. The first one is the income range. The second one is the ethnic group. And then in this study, there is a grand total or table total that is the 1120. So there are 11 and 20 people or subjects in this study. So for the ethnic group, we have four ethnic group, A, B, C, and D. And then for the income range, we have five income range. So the ethnic group, the A, B, C, and D, they represent a row, right? And then the income range, each range represent one column. So for the 80, for the 83, so if you look all the way down, so this is the call the column total. They add these four numbers to get the total. And then for the the 360, the 293, the 215, 154, and the 100, they are called column total. And then if you look at each row, so for uh, ethnic group A, if you look all the way to the right, the 252 is called row total. That is 83 plus 62 plus 53 plus 35 plus 19 equals to 252. If you just look at... um this number each of this number is called joint frequency and here is why we call this two-way contingency table every joint frequency corresponds to two status the income range and the ethnic group so this number corresponds to that income range and that ethnic group all right so they are called joint frequency so let's go ahead and read the problem so in I'm going to clean up the table so that is easier for you to read. So the first one is find the probability that we pick one donator randomly. Find the probability that this donator belongs to ethnic group C. So A is probability of group C. So how do we do this? The way we do this is we take the sum of group C, which is a 266 right here, divided by the grand total. So that is a 266 divided by the grand total. So in some situation, uh, they might want you to approximate the probability and then round your answer to four decimal places. So that means you simply took 266 divided by 1120. So that is equals to 0 0.2375 exactly. Sometimes you do have to round. And then for the next problem, uh, I will have to scroll down a little bit. So why don't you take a screenshot of this so you don't have to constantly go back to this this uh, this time of the video because you want to just move on, right? So take a screenshot of this and then I will go over the next one, all right? Do it. Part B. I'm going to read the problem to you, right? Part B is find the probability that this donator donated $151 to $200. So probability $151 to $200. How do we answer this question? So this one, we have to take the total of that column divided by the grand total, which is 154 divided by 1120 so that is 154 divided by uh, 1120 so 1120 and then you use your calculator approximate that that is equal to 0 0.1375 all right and then in part c find the probability that this donator is from good a and donated over 200 dollars so part c is from good a and over $200. So this is an N. N means we have to look for a joint frequency. That person belongs to A and donated over $200, which is 19 over here. 19. So that is a joint frequency. So we have 19 divided by the 1120. This, this problem, I leave the decimal to you. And then part D is donated one to fifty dollars or is from group a that one is harder so if you have one event or another you have to use a principle called inclusion exclusion principle so what that does is first you have to add the two probabilities 
1 to 50 plus the probability of A and then you have to minus the probability 1 to 50 and A. So 1 to 50, what is the column total? 1 to 50, that is 360, right? So this is a 360 divided by 1120. How many people in ethnic group A? 252. So we have 252 divided by 1120 and their joint frequency uh, 1 to 50 and group A, so which is uh, 83. So this is a uh, minus 83 divided by 1120. Alright, so we have 360 plus 252 minus 83, that is equals to 529 divided by 1120, that is your answer. I leave the approximation to you. So that is D, and then E is, though suppose the per, uh, donator donated that much, what is the probability that this person is from group D? Then this is a conditional probability. So E is probability given, suppose means given, 151 to $200. What is the probability that this person is from group D? This problem is not hard. So let me show you the strategy. The strategy is you look at the given. So that is 151 to 200. And then you look for the total, the column total. And then you put the column total in the denominator. So if you look up, the column total is 154. All right, 154, column total. So we have 154. And then we are locked in this column. So 154, how this column, 154, how many, uh, which number? corresponds to uh, group D. That is 54, right? So we put the 54 on top because in that column, 54 people are from group D. So that is your probability. It is just that easy. And then part F, we have uh, from group B, find the probability that this person donated 51 to 100 bucks. 51 to 100 given that this person is from group B. So this strategy is look for the total number of group B, which is where? Total number of group B that is all the way on the right, 264. So this is a 264. And then out of what? How many? The 264, the second row, how many people are from how many people uh, donated 51 to 100 dollars that are uh, in the second row that is 77 so right here right so that is 77 out of 264 so this is a 77 all right and then uh g are the events over 200 bucks and group c mutually exclusive so over 200 bucks and group C mutually exclusive. That means is this probability equal to zero? So over $200 and group C, so we have a joint frequency 32. This 32 is divided by the grand total. 32 divided by grand total. Clearly that is not equal to zero. You have to show this work. So they are not mutually exclusive what else did they ask if just uh, what if what if the joint frequency is equals to zero instead of 22 and the grand total is still 11 20 so to answer that what if i'm going to change colors for that so this is a what if so what if you have zero divided by 11 20 the joint frequency is zero then that is equals to zero. That means the over 200 bucks and ethnic group C, they don't share anyone in common. So that means the intersection between these two events is empty, then they are mutually exclusive if the joint frequency is, is uh, equals to zero. All right, and then the last one, I can just read the problem to you. Are the events group A 
and donated 101 to 150 independent or dependent. So that is part H. So part H is uh, A, AM 101 to 150 independent or dependent. How do you show that two events are independent? If these two events are independent, that means the N is equals to probability of A times the probability of donating 101 to 150 bucks. So this equation is equal. What is the N? So A and 101, right? A and 101. A and 101. So that is right here, right? That is a 53 divided by the grand total. And then, no, 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 hold on, sorry. I was talking too fast. So A itself, the total is 252. So we have a 252 divided by the grand total. Okay, and then what else? 101 to 150, so 101 to 150, the total is 215 divided by 1120. What about the joint frequency? The joint is 53 divided by 1120. So that means they are asking, is this equal? 53 divided by 1120, is that equals to 252 divided by 1120 times 215 divided by 1120? You have to check to see. Is this equal? The answer is no, right? So they are not equal. They are not equal. That means they are not independent. Not independent means dependent. That's it. So in the next part, I will show you another two-way contingency table.